The X1 is well built, practical and fun to drive pure electric SUV. Although its firm ride holds it back the X1 is merely an electric version of the latest X1 SUV, built on the same platform as multiple other BMWs and the next generation Mini Countryman. While the i3 looked rather quirky, was complicated to produce and was a bit too out there for some potential buyers, the X1 is thoroughly normal. If you ignore the giant kidney grills, that is. Criticize the X1's more conventional nature if you really want, but we expect it'll lead to more popularity in the showroom. We have no doubt that some will like the look of the larger rims BMW offers, but we definitely recommend the smallest wheels for the X1, because they help to take the edge off a firm ride. Otherwise, motorway refinement is excellent, and you feel well isolated from road and wind noise, plus the car feels very stable at high speeds. The steering doesn't offer much in the way of feedback, and as we find in many current BMW products, it's quite a weighty setup. It's predictable enough, though, and set at the right sort of speed. It's also possible to do a little bit of steering from the other end of the X1, as a greedy mid-corner throttle application can lead to some limited movement from the rear axle. Although we tested the entry-level X-Line version of the X1 rather than the M Sport with its more focused suspension setup, we still found it too firm. The car is a tad jittery on some surfaces at higher speeds, while speed bumps and larger potholes can be felt in the cabin quite obviously. As it stands, the body stays plenty flat during hard cornering, so BMW could afford to soften the damping a touch. The X1 has 490 liters of boot space, which is down on the 540 liters you get in a regular X1, but the decrease is all in the underfloor storage area, so most of the time you won't notice. In any case, what remains of the underfloor compartment can still squeeze in a charging cable. Step inside and the X1 greets you with a light, airy cabin that really helps to give the feeling that BMW has maximized the space available. The open cabin design means that there isn't much space for hidden storage beyond the glove box, but the X1 still has plenty of useful touches. For example, the wireless charging pad between the front seats is nearly vertical, but a plastic clip stops your phone sliding around while you're driving. The BMW is a fun, engaging car to drive quickly, helped by a chassis that does a good job of shrugging off the X1's considerable weight figure. During more relaxed driving, we encountered a little more wind and road noise than we might have liked, but nothing too excessive. In any case, you can always drown this out with the excellent Harman Kardon sound system, a worthwhile upgrade in our opinion, even at 660 pounds. The BMW X1 currently starts from over 53,000 pounds nearly 20,000 pounds more than the base X1. Buyers are given a choice of the familiar X-Line and M Sport specifications, with plenty of optional extras available. Standard kit includes LED headlights, 18-inch alloy wheels, an automatic tailgate, two-zone climate control, a reversing camera, adaptive cruise control, interior ambient lighting, 10.25-inch digital driver's display and 10.7-inch central touchscreen running the latest iteration of BMW's iDrive infotainment system, iDrive 8, plus Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now, Volvo has announced that its electric SUV has entered production and claims the model is enjoying strong demand. All units of the XC40 Recharge that will be produced this year have already been sold, and deliveries will begin in October. Volvo's first electric model is based on the XC40 SUV. The 75 kWh battery provides an autonomy of 400 km and powers two 408 HP electric motors. The base version, with rear-wheel drive, is equipped with an electric motor, capable of 238 horsepower plus 7 horsepower compared to the FWD version. The 69 kWh battery has been carried over from the latter, but thanks to some improvements, it offers a slightly higher range, 460 km, WLTP, compared to the 425 km it offered before. That in the case of the XC40 Recharge. 
If we refer to the C40 Recharge RWD, it can travel up to 476 km on a single charge, plus 38 km. At a fast, 130 kW station, the 10-80% run takes 34 minutes. The second rear-wheel drive version combines a 251 horsepower engine with an 82 kWh battery. The range is up to 515 km for the XC40 Recharge and 533 km for the C40 Recharge. The one mounted on the rear axle develops 249 hydrogen phosphide, and the one on the rear 159 HP, before they developed 203 HP each. The 82 kWh battery also equips this version. If the XC40 Recharge Twin Motor AWD has a range of 500 km, plus 62 km, the C40 Recharge Twin Motor AWD can travel up to 507 km on a single charge. An extra 56 km. Both the Volvo XC40 Recharge and C40 Recharge can be equipped with a new set of 19-inch wheels. Last but not least, the plug-in hybrid versions of the 60 and 90 range models received a new onboard charger, so they can now be charged with up to 6.4 kilowatts. This results in shorter loading times. In addition to the electric propulsion system, the XC40 Recharge will be the first Volvo model to use the new Android Automotive OS multimedia system developed in partnership with Google. Its main advantage is that it will offer an ecosystem of native apps that Android phone and tablet users are already familiar with, including Google Maps, Google Play Store and Google Assistant. Also, the XC40 Recharge will be the first Volvo model to receive major updates to the operating system and over-the-air applications. Unlike Android Auto, which needs a connection to your Android phone to run, Android Automotive OS runs on your car independently. The German SUV is developed on the architecture of the GLA, hence some similarities. Aesthetically, it's not very different from the EQC. Of course, we have slightly modified front and rear spoilers, but the front grille is closed, there is no exhaust and the LED strip that joins the taillights is noticeable. All of them tell you that you are dealing with a Mercedes-Benz EQ and the cabin brings a lot with the GLA, except for a few details such as the graphics of the dashboard clocks or the infotainment system. 190 HP electric motor as I mentioned, EQA comes standard with two 7-inch displays, but customers also have 10.25-inch ones available, included in the list of optional equipment. Also standard is the MBUX infotainment system which has an integrated navigation with electric intelligence function. In short, this technology plans the fastest route to your destination and takes into account charging stops. In addition, it makes changes based on several factors, such as a possible traffic jam on the route. Launched in the EQA250 version, the electric model from Stuttgart is equipped with an electric motor that develops 140 kilowatts, the equivalent of 190 horsepower, and 375 newton meters of torque. Under these conditions, 100 km per hour is reached in 8.9 seconds, and the maximum speed is limited to 160 km per hour. Thanks to a battery with a capacity of 66.5 kWh, the new Mercedes-Benz EQA250 has an autonomy that exceeds 420 km WLTP. The average consumption declared by the manufacturer is 15.7 kWh for every 100 km traveled. The battery can be charged at fast stations with up to 100 kW. In this case, the 10% to 80% half takes about 30 minutes. On an AC outlet, the time required for the same interval increases to 5 hours and 45 minutes. Autonomy over 420 km later. A more powerful version will also appear in the range. It will have two electric motors, so implicitly all-wheel drive. They will develop 270 horsepower. The range will also increase to 500 kilometers. As befits a top-of-the-line model, the German's electric SUV comes equipped with a wide range of assistance systems. 
Active lane keeping assist and active brake assist are among those included in the standard equipment. The market debut of the new Mercedes-Benz EQA is scheduled for February. In Germany, the newest member of the EQ family starts at €38,540.